Welcome to Tunisia's Lux Beauty Tips and Potpourri, the channel where we get it all in. You can also learn more about the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Thank you for stopping by. Greetings. Welcome back to Tunisia's Lux Beauty Tips and Potpourri. Sending all of you wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sister lockers and micro lockers out there. All the love that you deserve and sending you back. Um, in equal measure, all the wonderful love that y'all give to this channel. I want to thank you first for all your support. I also want to let you know that there is a sale going on at I Am Melon and Magic. Many of you have already purchased stuff over the last few days because of the email for those of you who are frequent flyers. And there's a coupon code that will give you 25% off up through the end of July and the coupon girl code I was going to say the coupon girl the coupon code is hot girl summer 22 hot girl summer 22 you use it at checkout the uh, anti-aging serum is also on sale so you buy one you get the other one 60% off so keep that in mind all right let's talk about the three things that will jeopardize your sister locks journey or will cause you to feel as though you've reached the end of your rope and you need to turn back and go in a different direction, maybe take your locks out. The three things that are part of this journey that we are all facing, perhaps at some time or another, that can make you give up or make you sort of not have a good taste in your mouth when it comes to the Sister Locks journey. This has to do with my collection of data as well as my own personal experiences, all right? You all have contributed so much on this channel. Again, I just want to say thank you. I can't even say thank you enough to the commentary, to the information you sent to my phone, to the thumbs up, to the sharing of videos, and so, 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 so much more. So I love y'all, and I want to thank you because what you're saying and what you're doing and how you're getting involved down to those of you who are sending me videos to share on the channel makes a big difference all right so i compile this by way of experience and by way of keeping a pulse on the serious issues that a lot of you all including me are facing the first thing that i want to talk about is the price tag um, i did a video recently about inflation in the sister locks community clearly that has become an issue for many of you and you have decided to begin maintaining your own locks all right sometimes that is what is barring others of you from not going ahead and getting sister locks the price tag being able to find something that makes sense to you and if it's not the initial price tag if you've inquired even more then it could be what it takes to maintain the locks in terms of the frequent retightenings that are a requirement for this style whether it's sister locks or micro locks so the price tag is a big thing it's becoming an even bigger thing not just because of inflation but because of supply and demand um, when someone stands on their feet for such and such number of hours we have to give credence to the fact that they have a right to charge whatever it is that they feel the market can bear or whatever it is that they feel in a better case scenario their clients can bear um i do believe as an entrepreneur there's a way to raise your prices there's a time to do it it should be justifiable and there's a way to raise your prices sometimes when people get too busy the only thing they can do is raise their prices because of supply and demand so in order to limit the income incoming of clients, you have to raise your prices so that you have less clients coming in, but you're still making the same amount of money because when you work and you sell yourself for time and hours, there's no other way to do it, okay? And then additionally, when you have people who are increasing their level of mastery, they're taking classes, they're growing in their art form, they deserve to be compensated. So I definitely get that. But I also know I'm hearing that people are increasing their prices by as much as 50%. They're increasing their prices 100%. They're doubling them and so forth and so on. That can present a problem. And so it's important when you're looking into the journey and when you're trying to decide whether or not you want to, you can continue to 
uh, maintain your hair lock, your sister locks by having someone else to do it that you really consider at what price point you're really comfortable at. And if you can find other people in that area who can also match that price point. Um, and if not, how far would you maybe have to travel geographically in order to be able to find someone that can do a good job because it's very difficult. So the money aspect is a serious piece. The installs now are going up markedly. Something you may want to consider for those of you who are new to the community is perhaps shifting over to a trainee. If you're already with a loctician and you're not satisfied, maybe consider a trainee. I always say a lot of times people who are new are more willing to be open. They're more willing to be lifelong learners. They're a little bit more flexible. They are also a lot, they can be very passionate. And don't judge a book by its cover. Don't just think because you're perhaps uh, with someone who has a lot of experience that that's the best person that you can actually find. Oftentimes you really can find a trainee and oftentimes with this style, for me, for example, I require a lot of flexibility. So thankfully I have two locticians who accommodate me and I don't mean in terms of schedule, I mean in terms of what I want to do with my hair. There's certain locks in my head that only I maintain. <laughs> there are other things that I do. I've taken out half of my locks and redone them. I've done a lot of things to my locks. And some locticians wouldn't appreciate that. Some locticians wouldn't appreciate the fact that I use oil in my hair. But I have two locticians who are wonderful and we really vibe. So that's an important consideration. Which brings me to my next point, number two, which is finding the right loctician is becoming harder and harder and harder. Shout out to beautiful Priscilla. I have three Pr Priscillas that I work with and talk with, but this is the Priscilla who I'm talking to about the henna, who I'm gonna, she's submitted a video. So as soon as I edit it, I'll get it to you all. But Priscilla has gone through over 10 locticians, I believe, and just has gotten really fed up. And the last one that she was somewhat satisfied with, she was just that somewhat satisfied with um not entirely but it happened to be the best of the group and she's been very disappointed because she's had she's lost so many locks i think now she's down to 450 60 70 something locks she started out with over 500 um just the marrying of locks the not pulling in stray hairs and doing all sorts of mayhem and that is something that i'm finding is so common for those of you that have a great loctician it's no different in any other area of life out here you call a mechanic you get some good ones you get some bad ones you get some honest ones you get some dishonest ones you bring a contractor to your house some of them know what they're doing some of them don't some of them piecemeal they leave their tools they don't finish they come back and forth they overquote. they do a poor job you have to really vet your loctician and you cannot assume because they are an ambassador or they're a seasoned loctician or they are someone that you know has has had a um a history of doing hair for many years you can't assume necessarily that that is that that may be the best person for you just because they are seasoned you can't judge someone just because of their prices now there are some things about being seasoned when you have a great loctician that are wonderful especially if they're a cosmetologist especially if they have a level of mastery especially if they've gone beyond sister locks especially if they're maintaining their own sister locks but it is so important that you take a balanced perspective when it comes to looking for your loctician. If you're new to Sister Locks, please keep an eye out for the video where I'm giving you advice on all the things you need to do to properly research the Sister Locks brand and uh, the whole system and process prior to getting your Sister Locks. Please keep an eye out for that video because I really want to shed light on so many of the things that you could miss because you don't know a lot about this journey, you could miss it in the excitement and you can end up doing a lot of trial and error. Many, many, many women that I've talked to, probably 10 or 20% of the women that I've talked to have had sister locks more than one time. Not by choice, but because they ended up having to take down an install or a set of sister locks or even micro locks that were unsatisfactory. This is more common than you realize. Many women are with locticians who they are very dissatisfied with. 
a lot of tissues who are, they have gone to for years who still don't make exceptions when they need a last minute appointment or some emergency happens. Many lacticians that they are with who won't make simple repairs and fix certain things that may be going on that may only take 10 or 15 minutes without charging them a flat rate. There are a lot of things that go on and as entrepreneurs, people have the right to do whatever it is that they feel like doing if so far, if it doesn't take them so far out of the, the paradigm of being an entrepreneur, meaning you don't do things as an entrepreneur that do not serve your clients. You don't do things as an entrepreneur that make people walk away from your services. You don't do things as an entrepreneur that cannot justify themselves. So there's a thin line between that and some of the practices. Sometimes people can become, they can begin to take their clients for granted. And as such, they feel as though they deserve to receive more than what they give. You should always feel like with your loctician that that person genuinely cares about you, that they listen to you, that they work on that relationship and put as much into that relationship as you do, that they really give um, validity to your concerns, that you are made to feel comfortable, that you are not taken for granted, that for the most part, your appointments start on time, that if you happen to need an exception, they make an exception. This is, of course, as long as you're not an extremely difficult client, because there's such a thing as being a difficult client. So a lot of what I'm saying is about finding a balance. That's the best thing that we can do in life is to try to find the middle ground temperance card. Try to walk down the middle. It's a process of transmuting circumstances that come your way and finding what works best for everybody and what is the middle course. And that's what's really so important because we have some wonderful, some, some amazingly gifted locticians out there. They're booked. They're hard to find. They're tired. They're wiped out. They make a lot of exceptions, but we have a lot of people out there who are doing hair just for the money. And as an entrepreneur, if you do not love what you do, you are barred spiritually from being able to do a good job if you do not love what you do. So when you're working with someone, make sure you know that they love what they are doing. The only, the second thing and the only thing that can rival loving what you do is being very good at it and being very conscientious and having ethical standards. That can rival someone loving what they do in the sense that, let's say, for example, you've been doing this for 20 years and you're kind of tired of doing it and you're wanting to shift out, but you have a level of self-governance that is based on ethical standards, a level of professionalism, and there are certain um, standards that you meet and you are, are very self-governing and self-conscientious, which means that you do not perfection. No one is perfect, but you are serious about getting as close to perfection as you possibly can. And you remedy issues that come up on a regular basis and you're willing to, to accept feedback from the people that you serve. That's critical. That's critical. Short of that. Really being passionate about what you do makes you open-minded. It makes you want to please your customers and go above and beyond. It makes you give of yourself in ways that are unquantifiable with regard to money. So really, really, really be mindful of that. It is so, so, so important. If I threw products together when it came to um, uh, putting stuff on I Am Melanin Magic, you would be able to tell. I only use products that I have used on myself or those products that have come back as a result of trials after trial after trial and have worked, okay, for the greatest majority of people. There are so many products that I could just throw together and put them out there and make money, but that's not because long term, what I'm concerned with is results. It's the same thing with my coaching program and my mentoring. There's certain people that I simply will not take in because they're not serious. And I'm interested in results and I'm interested in you having success on your investment because it reflects on both of us. So it's, uh, it has to be about more than the dollar bills and that is what you need to be mindful of. The other thing with regard to working with a loctician is someone that cares about your hair, which brings me to the third almost most important point because you get the sister locks because of the lifestyle, because of the hair abundance, because of everything 
that has to do with freeing yourself, like I say, from the tyranny of hair enslavement. Um, you do it because perhaps you want to find ways to have your hair grow uh, more fully and, and be more healthy without having to use chemicals. Maybe you don't like having to spend hours after hours doing your hair. Maybe you've had a protective style and even though it was supposed to be protective, it didn't protect your hair because we have a lot of that going on as well. There could be any number of reasons why you got sister locks, but for sure, you did not get them to have to turn around and take them out. You did not get them to experience hair fall and hair thinning and problems with balding that are short term related and don't have to do necessarily with your genealogy and genetics or some sort of scarring that has happened prior to getting your sister locks. You don't want the sister locks themselves to create problems with alopecia. You can have any number of reasons. There's a lady who contacted me, y'all didn't even realize this. She was using extensions and the extensions that were used were not clean. It was human hair, but they were filled with dust mites. Okay, and she put those in her hair and all hell broke loose. So, again, the people you're dealing with, the quality, their level of being ethical, their professional standards, their uh, ability to be conscientious and to really give a damn about what's going on with your hair. And if they have created a problem for you, walking with you side by side to remedy that problem. I cannot tell you the countless stories that I have heard from women who, when they express and they really shouldn't have to express because if someone is standing over your head every six to eight weeks or every four to ten weeks or whatever your cycle is, they see what's going on with your hair better than you do unless you go home and monitor lock by lock by lock, which is what I suggest you do. You must participate. You must actively participate in your own rescue. Never let anyone tell you anything differently. But the person that is standing over your hair is in a position to see what's going on with your hair. If they miss something or if they're not the person that's really active in communicating, that's your job. You need to take that job from them anyway, and you need to take on that job, and you need to understand the bonus is when they do it. Most of them, a great deal of them, are not going to do it. The bonus is when they do it. If you want them to do it, then you need to begin to actively ask questions at your sessions as to the state and the status of your hair, okay? So on to this situation with why you got the locks in the first place. You didn't get them to lose them. You got them so you could live a lifestyle for whatever the reasons are. The last thing you want to experience is thinning, balding, and losing locks. Losing locks because someone has ripped them out because maybe they're not using the right tools. My next video, it was supposed to be today's video, but I didn't have time to do all the necessary research and to make sure that I tried each one of these tools to the best of my ability, and I'm not good with these. But of course, you know, this is the main sister locks tool. This is not the, the end all be all. If you like this tool, then you can definitely get something that um, rivals that tool. I'm going to talk about nine different tools, nine or 10 different tools, hopefully in my next video. So make sure you stay tuned. But let's say, for example, you've been telling your loctician, I forget which one of you, there's so many of you I talked to, please forgive me. I forget which one of you told me you've been practically begging your loctician to stop using this tool. I've had significant number of you complain about this tool and tell me that you feel that this tool rips the hair or it's pulling your hair out or it's not small enough at the tip and so forth and so on. I'm not having that experience with this tool that I know of when Efrage does my hair, but that's not to say that you wouldn't because it depends on a lot of things. One of you who talked to me about this a long time ago said you have very fine, thin hair and this is not an appropriate tool. Others of you who have talked to me have simply said this tool doesn't work for you. Um, and you've asked your loctician to try a different tool and they haven't been willing to. And you know you're experiencing loss. Guess what that means? That means you got to start looking for someone else because there's a litany of other tools that may work better for you. And it means that it's time to transition or it means that you need to begin to determine whether or not you're in a position to do your own locks. Let me tell you something. 
this hairstyle is an addict is addictive and it has some addictive qualities and what i mean by that is this i've talked to people who are experiencing hair loss at the hands of locticians and they're almost certain that that is what it is from not the fact that they're presenting with something hormonal or stress related or diet related or something else but they are not able to get up out of that seat and stop going to that loctician and i'm talking about people who have been experiencing hair loss and have had even even something so extreme as uh, lesions and red sores in their hair and are continuing to go to the same loctician consultant. It's got to stop. When you start having problems, y'all, please arrest them as soon as possible. By the time you experience a problem, it has been the, the, the groundwork for that hair loss has been happening long before it came to your attention. It has happened several retightenings or more before it came to your attention. By the time you recognize it, it could potentially be something systemic. And when I mean systemic, I don't mean systemic. I mean something that is happening in various areas throughout your hair where your hair may have been weakened. Okay, we don't have the same levels of strength in every area of our hair. Okay, we know that these areas here get a lot more stress with regard to us running our hands through them with regards to styling putting in rollers and everything else so when you experience hair loss in certain areas you have to be mindful of that you have to also be mindful of the areas certain areas represent certain organs shout out to there's a sister i've got to give you this information i wish i could recall the sister who brought this to my attention but she's studying the where, what areas of health have to do where you may be losing hair for example this area the crown i believe is associated with a uh, heart chakra issues heart disease hypertension high blood pressure things like that um the back area back here is associated i believe with upper respiratory lungs asthma things of that nature i want to say this area is sacral chakra i can't don't quote me on that but I believe it's, when I say sacral chakra, I'm talking about things that relate to relationship, emotions, codependence, addictive behaviors, and things of that nature. But uh, back at the ranch, I digress, and that is when you have a loctician that you're feeling some kind of way about and you're not sure, don't keep sitting for those appointments. Start to find someone else. And I know it's hard to get in a new person's chair every time you turn around and not be able to find the right person. But to me, if you find someone who's not doing a great job on your hair and you're not satisfied, you're going to do yourself a disservice and you're going to lose hair over time by continuing to patronize that individual, especially after you have very gently and then perhaps assertively express some of your concerns this is very very important but um for example the, the the example that i used was you have a loctician that's using this and refuses to switch to another tool or to try something different sometimes i think that could be because this tool is a little bit faster you're not having to stop and and go back through which could add over the course of a head depending on how many locks you have an additional 15 to 30 minutes but if it may salvage your hair is something you want to consider and it's not the tool that i want to focus on it's the idea that you're having a concern that's not being remedied you're telling someone repeatedly each time you get up my head is hurting you're telling them this repeatedly repeatedly i'm saying because sometimes it can take a few times for you to realize you know what i think this is becoming a problem i think my head has been hurting too much and because a lot of times you can get a retightening and when you leave out of there it feels fine it's not until you get home. Sometimes it's not until the next day. But the point is that you brought this to their attention and they haven't changed. It's different if you haven't opened your mouth and you haven't asserted yourself and you haven't been proactive and communicative. But if you have and it's not changing, you got to worry about it because your locks are going to thin and you're already facing many uh, mitigating factors that can create thinning anyway, which is really at the crux of number three is that doing what you can to stave off hair loss and hair thinning things like making sure your locks are not too thin to begin with if you're dealing with someone who's committed to that number of locks 
in order to feel like you're getting sister locks. They're committed to that number of locks and you don't have the type of volume that can sustain that and you have thin and fine hair and you know those repeated retightenings at the way, at the level and at the rate that they're doing them is going to create problems. You need to stop and you need to rethink and you need to ask yourself, is this the right loctician for me? You have to have someone who can think outside of the box and who can take the Sister Locks brand and apply it to into the individual needs of their clients. Okay, I may be a certified Sister Locks consultant and I'm not. This is an example. Let's say the cutoff is 450 braids and I'm looking at someone's head. Okay, and I'm at 420 and I, as I'm getting through the hair, there's no way I'm going to get 30. I'm not going to say or I'm not going to feel as though they don't have sister locks. I'm not going to tell them they don't have sister locks. I'm going to take a look at their hair from the beginning and get a great estimate of what is required. But as I move through that hair, if I'm coming to the realization that this is not going to be a head that's going to have 450 locks and i communicate that to the person that's in my chair and they want to tell me no matter what they want 450 locks and i'm sitting here saying that's going to jeopardize the health of your hair or vice versa they're telling me we need to get 450 locks because they're so uh in the have their head in the box to the extent that they don't realize you have to move according to what the situation requires and no two people have the same fingerprint and while some of us don't believe in oils many of us do believe in oils and i i i vouch for this oil and i die by oils and i don't mean that literally y'all know what i mean but i'll fight for that because i'll be the same person to say that the majority of people that are saying that are not very far along in their journey the majority, and I'm not saying everybody, but the majority of people who are trying to do that are not three plus years into their journey. Because I will tell you, when you continue to put that type of stress on your hair and your hair is dry and brittle, which it no, will no doubt be because you're dealing with the elements. We're not living in um, paradise. This is not the Garden of Eden. We don't have the, the, the quality of air and the quality of water and, every, and the quality of diet that we used to have where our sebum could do what it needed to do. And many of your follicles are blocked because your hair is, is not in a state of health. So you go on that journey and you allow your hair to fend for itself in a way that you wouldn't allow your, wouldn't have your teeth fending for themselves. You wouldn't have your skin fending for itself. You wouldn't have your body fending for itself and not trying to supplement your nutrition and watch what's going to happen because this, I will say, can be a stressful hairstyle. It can stress the hair. And the longer your locks get, like me, the more serious I get about everything that I need to do to minimize hair loss. If it means I got to do my own locks at some point, I'll do them. If it means I need to take care over areas that are very tender, I'll do that. If it means at some point I need to cut, okay? Right now, I haven't died in, what, over a year now? And y'all know it's killing me because I need that burgundy back and I want it back. But I'm trying to give my hair a rest because my tips took a beating when I was doing that dye. Over a few years, I was doing it back to back to back to back, and my hair needs a rest. And it's so much softer now that I've given it some time to bounce back. So I still believe we have to take care of our ends, and I like curly ends. So I take out my ends, and then I pick lint, and I do a multitude of other things that stress my hair, which is why I make sure I go in with this. Okay, and if you have dry hair, go in with your sprays and then go in with this. But do what you have to do because while this may not be water, it is rich with antioxidants. It is rich with all sorts of minerals and, and, and wonderful uh, qualities that are put in things that are restorative, that regenerate your hair, that help to exfoliate the dead skin that may be around your roots or your follicles, that help to heal hair trauma and, and scalp issues and provide your hair like a cushion. You're going to need a cushion. So if you're someone that's not oiling, I ask you to consider how that's working out for you. If you're having scalp issues, you might want to look into something else, even if it's not this and it's another product or something that you concoct or manufacture on your own. Just be mindful because, again, I will say, there are countless stories, and some of them may have to do with age. Some of them don't. Some of us don't have women in our immediate and even 
close extended family that have dealt with hair loss. So when you start losing the hair and you know that your scalp has been hurting, you've been complaining, when you know that you have thin locks, when you know you've been going to see the loctician consultant every four weeks, every five weeks, just know that you don't see the stress on your hair immediately. It has a cumulative effect and it can take years, y'all, for your hair to finally stop being resilient. And for you to finally start experiencing thinning over time, it can take years for you to realize that your hair has been in need of additional conditioning or maybe you needed other things that you needed to be doing in your hair to protect it. It can take years before you begin to see the fallout from it, the literal fallout and then the fallout, meaning the outcome and the result. Don't wait until you start having problems. This number three is the biggest risk to your sister lock journey, thinning. And as I mentioned, two frequent reties, a loctician that is trying to meet time restraints versus trying to make sure that she's caring for your hair. That's the biggest issue that we're dealing with right now. Um, hair that is not resilient and elastic, doesn't have the elasticity that it needs to um, be able to bounce back from trauma because it's dry. And so because it's dry and brittle, it's breaking. Okay, a scalp that is not healthy. Um, you being in a situation where you sit in a chair and you let them do your hair while you read the book and you don't pay attention to anything that's going on. And then when you get home, you don't go in the mirror and take a look at your hair or feel through it and see what's going on. Someone who's maybe so obsessed with the grid that they don't mind a loctician cutting your hair and separating it and pulling it to make sure that grid is perfect instead of making sure that that grid is good. <laughs> I'm not obsessed with the grid. There are a lot of things, y'all, that I hear a lot of people say on some of these channels that I've come across that to me are the result of people who have not had sister locks for long. And it's just a result of them not knowing and them maybe being a bit naive. But I will tell you, the same recipe does not work for every person. You have to do what works for your hair. And many people swear by not using oil some of us swear by using oil and many of our lacticians use oils and they go beyond and against what the brand says and we swear by that and some people say it creates lint you don't have lint in your hair no matter what if you don't have lint in your hair because locks that's part of what creates the locking sensation you are alive there's dust around you you're going to attract it to your hair the same way you did before okay even if you never put oils in your hair before, you have natural oils that magnetize oils to your hair. My caveat to you is to thoroughly, thoroughly wash your hair and to at intervals do clarifying shampoos. That is what is important. But you have to balance this journey because having a flaky scalp and having all that buildup and residue in your hair each time is just as much of a threat to keeping your hair from breathing than you having to do lit detail and make sure you're checking your hair. I'm awful. I was outside the other day cutting grass, letting stuff fly all over the place. And I know it. I need to be out there with something on my head. Okay. You got to be shaking the lint out. You got to pay attention to what's going on. I'm not one for just covering up, even though that works as well. But I've picked my lint out to a fault and I've paid for it. I have paid miserably for it, especially around the front parts of my hair because, you know, that's that. In the early years, that's what I dealt with. I didn't realize that this was something I needed to kind of be mindful of. Now I know better. Stay away from heavy oils. If you use heavy oils on your hair, just make sure you wash and that you wash thoroughly and that you don't put conditioners and other heavy shampoos on your hair that are not good for your hair. But again, I will repeat the three main things that are going to jeopardize your sister locks journey and make you walk away from this journey or make you not have a feel good, happy feeling of abundance that you made the right choice is the price tag, the quality of the loctician, and the health of your hair. If you don't stay on top of those things and have backup plans and remedies and be able to anticipate some of the uh, things that you may run into, you may be sorry later. So mark my words, be an activist when it comes to your hair. Um, never feel too shy to ask the necessary questions of your loctician. There's a way to do everything. There's a way to be polite. There's a way to show love. There's a way to 
you know, um, smooth out communication so that both people at the end of the day are happy. But then again, at the end of the day, if you're dealing with somebody that's unreasonable that you can't have a conversation with and they don't want to listen to you, you have to vote with your feet. You have to find somebody who does. And there's always someone else out there who can do your hair. And to be quite honest with you, I'd rather, if I had to, if I was some of you all out there, find me a high school student down at the high school who loves hair and can lay some weave, some lace wigs, and do some other stuff. I'd rather use her and teach her how to do my rotation and teach her how to pull in that hair and know that she's being tender and pay her something that she would love to be paid by being a student than to go to somebody every day who just has a title and what they're doing to my hair is causing my hair to fall out. No way. I'm telling you, you got to be willing to think outside of the box where there's a will, there's a way, and there's always been a million ways to skin a cat. There are so many ways to maintain your sister locks and still have sister locks if that's what you're concerned with. You don't have to have someone pulling your hair out or disrespecting you or charging you something that you don't feel you're getting a value for. It's different if you feel you have, you're getting a value. I told you my one of my lacticians recently raised her price. It's going to cost me an additional maybe 50 to 60 bucks depending upon the time. She's worth it. She's worth it. Hell, people pay that um, stopping at Chick-fil-A a few times a month. She's worth it. I'm not complaining about that. But if I was going to someone who was marrying my locks, it was taking them forever. I, they weren't moving through the process. They didn't care about my process. They didn't care about my feedback. And they were just doing whatever they wanted to do. And they were yesing me. And at the end of the day, I go home and I realize, you know, I got a missing lock over here, a lock here. Shout out to you, Priscilla said you get home and you feel locks coming out because she's snatching them through. It's crazy. So let me know your thoughts about the video, please. I want some feedback, feedback, feedback. For those of you who want, again, to purchase the I Am Melanin Magic that is on sale. Everything is on sale on the website. You will get a 25% off. That includes the anti-aging serum that is already on sale. It'll almost be like buying one, get one free. But again, the code is Hot Girl Summer. Say hi to Albie. Say hello, Albie. Hot Girl Summer. Okay, Hot Girl Summer 22. Hot Girl Summer 22. Put that discount code in at checkout. Don't fall for the first time buyer coupon. It's not as much. If you want to take advantage of this sale through the end of July, which is about two more weeks, Hot Girl Summer 22. I love y'all and I wish you the absolute best. We are in this together. Please leave me lots of comments in the comment section. I want to know what you think. I want to know what your experiences are. Send me 678-438-6442, your videos. Send me your videos. You can send them as a Google link or you can send them to my WhatsApp. There's something you want to share about your journey on this channel that you feel is worthwhile. Send it to me. I can edit it where it needs to be edited and get it up. Okay. So that you can communicate some very critical aspects of your journey. Things that you have found out that you think may benefit others. Disclaimer again, this is my experience. These are things I've learned on my journey. These are the things I believe. So these are the things that are going to work for me. I do not discredit anybody else's reality. I am not attacking the experiences that anyone else has had. I'm simply saying in my experience with my hair, and I'm a person that's very hands-on. I was born hands-on. In my experience, these are the things that I see as critical issues. And when I'm speaking in my videos, it's about things that I'm passionate about, that I have some firsthand knowledge about, or something that I have done a lot of research on. So much love to you guys again, and I'm sorry this video kind of drug out. This is supposed to be a 25-minute video, but go figure, aren't they all? But stay tuned for the next video, which will be on the lock tools. Like I said, we're going to be researching, I think, nine of them. I think I gave two or three away on this channel a few years ago, so I'm missing a few. But um, I'm just going to give you some, some ideas about what your options are and give you a sense of how maybe some of these tools can work for you and give you some information about how to get them as well. I love you. I want you to be peaceful. I want you to be productive. I want you to be prosperous. And I want you to feel that passion for life, okay? Namaste, everybody. See you again in 5D on the other side. Join me on Butterfly Transformations, my spiritual channel. Bye.
Hey ladies, do you love the way your skin looks and feels? I know I do because I am using the I Am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum. And at 50, I love the way my skin looks and feels. This blend is bomb. It renews, revitalizes, rejuvenates, soothes, conditions, moisturizes, tones, brightens, and fades all in one step. So if you're ready to get your glow on, go get you some I Am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum.